Most states do charge a real estate transfer fee. You can Google it. Um, the states that were in question, Missouri does not have a real estate transfer fa fee. It's one of the 13 states that doesn't have a real estate transfer fee. California does have a transfer fee of 0.11%. Of Look it up. There, there's a local and there's a state. It's not, it's not as significant as states like Washington, Pennsylvania, um, Florida, but there is a real estate transfer fee of 55 cents per 5000 or $500 of assessed value. So every $500, there's an additional 55 cents. So yeah, it can, it can be significant depending on the value of the property. Um, and I, I'm not sure on transfer fees. I know that Prop 13 is exempt if you're transferring it into an entity that you own. I'm not sure if the if the real estate transfer fee is also exempt if you're trans like a disregarded entity, a single member LLC, or a living trust. So that tra transfer fees are all over the place. Sometimes by state, sometimes by county, sometimes by township. And so we know that they exist, um, but we kind of leave it up to you and, and, and contact a, a, a good real estate attorney in your area. Most of the time, realtors also will know, real, real estate agents, because they're dealing with real estate transfer fees all the time. Every time they sell a house, they're, they're going to know, I think, what real estate transfer fee and then I missed a couple of the other questions. So what were if they? If you put that house into an LOC, who should, and it's a single member LOC, who should own that LOC? Should your trust own it? Should you have a holding company? And okay. why? Okay, so, and the, the answer is it depends. Um, most of the, you remember there's 45 states that don't offer charging order protection for single member LOC. A single member LLC does have corporate veil protection, which means if something happens in the property inside of that, you're protected. Sometimes I, I've run across students that have uh, very little equity. We re remember, we're not trying to protect the market value, only the equity. Let's say their estate is worth a million dollars, and they've got this little property worth 50000 and as all they, if they lo if they lost it, yeah, they wouldn't want to, but it's not going to kill them. So, do they need charging order protection for that? No, but they do need corporate veil protection. Remember, the the charging order protection is if you personally get sued. Now, I can, can't come take that asset away. If I've got a little um, a bit of equity relative to the size of my estate then maybe corporate veil protection is all you need. But if that, if that, if the equity in that home is sizable, again, relative to the size of your estate, now I'm gonna want good charging order protection, which means if I get sued, they cannot touch that. The charging order is their only legal remedy and they're not, then in that case, I don't wanna be the single member that owns the single member LLC in most states because most states do not offer charging order protection for single member LLCs. They consider it to be an alter ego of you. There's no innocent parties like there would be in a large limited partnership. In those cases, then you would want not to be the single member LLC yourself, but a holding company, let's say Wyoming, Nevada, Delaware, some, somewhere else that has really good charging order protection. So the property then would be in a single member LLC, let's say in California, I've got a lot of equity in it, I don't want to be the, the member, so I have my holding company in Wyoming be the member. Did that answer your question? Well, what if the, instead of having the holding company, you have put it in your revocable living trust instead? What, it, what becomes vulnerable then? Okay. And is that a good or a bad idea? Remember the trust really, doesn't exist until you die. I mean, it's there. It's a revocable inter vivos. It's a Latin for a while living. It's your living trust, but it really doesn't exist. It's a disregarded entity 
by the tax, by the courts, and by the IRS. It, it, it kind of doesn't exist. And the fact that it's revocable, I can move assets in and out, in and out 13 times a day if I want to. And because you always have access to those assets, a judgment creditor against you also has access. So if you put the single member LLC and tied that into your trust, that's good. You did, you, you, you won half the battle. Your interest in that single member LLC will avoid probate. Good job. But it doesn't protect it if you get sued. If you get sued, they're going to walk right through that living trust because, remember, it's revocable, amendable, changeable. You have access to it. Therefore, in essence, the court says you own, even though you titled the single member LLC in the name of the trust, you own the single member LLC. It's disregarded. They look right through it and go, oh, you own it. Therefore, it can be seized. It can be foreclosed on. I, 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 as a judgment creditor, could foreclose on your interest even if it's in a living trust. The living trust, remember, is a great probate tool, but it does not protect the assets generally from lawsuits. Okay, did that answer so, that? So in the case of a lawsuit, could they attach everything else Yes. Because of that one lawsuit, everything in your living trust becomes well, vulnerable? Well, there's a certain amount that, that can't be. Every state will have different homestead laws, you know, that will protect $3,000 in your car and a certain amount in your home and maybe your gun, maybe your family Bible and, you know, maybe your wedding ring. And there's certain things. But uh, other than the bare minimum that would be protected in state in federal bankruptcy in your state, uh, other than maybe whatever the homestead will, yeah, everything you own. Because remember, the trust doesn't exist. You are the trust until you die. Therefore, everything you own, in whether I don't, uh, whether it's in your name or the name of the trust, is is susceptible to the lawsuit. Okay, so again, just for clarity, even that second LOC you have becomes vulnerable to a lawsuit against the firm. Yeah, that's right. Because again, you personally got sued. They get a judgment against you. Can they take everything out of your living trust? Yeah, it, it, in, in essence, anything that's not protected by Homestead. That's correct, including all of your other single-member LLCs. Now, if, if you own an interest in a multi-member LLC, then the only thing they can do generally is put a charging order or a lien against your interest in that partnership or that LLC, but they can't take it away from you. Single member LLC, remember, doesn't offer charging order protection in most states. Okay?